Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 35. As always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams. Joining me as always, my co-host. Junior Ruiz, co-host of the Comics Remix. A.K.A. Gassy McGee. Where'd that come from? I so get no today. Last issue you belched. Did I? On your intro. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this week, man, we're going back to our great bitch fest about comics. What's wrong with comics today? Last week, we pretty much covered, you know, race and reboots and relaunches and any kind of little thing they've tried to bring in the new readers. And then we bashed the hell out of DC for making oral comics. <laughs> They should be HC horrible comics. Yeah, totally. They're they're pretty they're pretty bad, but outside of DC's bad editorial and the way they've handled things, I mean Marvel's got the same problems. All new Marvel now, all, all oh, new sorry. Marvel now. They're all new Marvel now. It uh isn't this just confusing for people? You know what I miss as a collector, and it actually helped me with uh, reading continuity? Back when Marvel used to go ahead, I think DC used to do it as well. I know Marvel for sure. In the fine print of the book, you would see the Punisher volume, whatever it was, issue number. They took that volume part out. Mm -hmm. So now you've got these guys who are going into a store and being like, hey, where's, you know, I got Wolverine 19 and 20. Is there a Wolverine 21? No, there's not. Okay, well, I got Wolverine, you know, 200. Where's uh, 199? Oh, it doesn't exist. That was actually number nine, number 20. You know, and you're like, wait, what? I wish they would put those volume things back in. Yeah, there. that's confusing. I really hate when they do that. That's I, I feel like that's something that's going to ruin it for new people coming in. You know, they were like legacy numbering, all that's intimidating. Someone sees 800 issues, they feel like, you know, and you don't have to know all that shit. See, they, they stepped on their own foot with that. Well, because DC, remember when they did uh, when After Crisis, when they relaunched in 87? Yeah. You're like Adventures of Superman, Detective, uh, Action Comics. That kept the same numbering. You just said in a bold new direction. Yeah. Why not do that again? Yeah. Why not? I, I like, like this high number. I was shit. I was uh, looking forward to getting you know Detective One Thousand. Yeah. I think they'll do it, man. Oh, of course they will. When if it gets they're not there. back to the regular Mar- DCU by then. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're pretty committed. But you know, Marvel's this whole time has broke a thing. It's making a lot of confusion in a lot of their books. One thing I don't like is the fact that they're doing relaunches on books that don't need relaunches. You know, like... Like Daredevil? Da- yeah, Daredevil didn't need one. I mean, I got it. It was a new direction, but it's the same creative team. Why not just, you know, next issue, bold new direction? So, obviously, as we discussed last issue, these type of tactics do not work. They do not bring in new readers. They might bring in relapsed readers, but you're not going to get fresh newbies that have never bought a comic book before. Right. I also think that... Uh, Variant covers, man. Like, I could understand if they did variant covers in, like, a 50-50. Yeah. Or, like, hey, there's four covers, so there's 25% of, you know, instead of doing this, like, bam, $15 variant, $40. I think it's ridiculous, man. Now, you know the companies are not to blame for that. Oh, seriously. Well, that's... The retailers are the ones. Well, that... on the pricing? Yeah. So, the company, because I'm not in the industry. I don't work at a store. So... When DC sent you out a cover, it's whatever the price is on the cover. Um, or, I mean, obviously you're, you're not. you for the but, regular issue, yeah, it's included. You know, you pay for it like you would a regular issue. The only way you can order that is by ordering a certain amount of that right. regular issue. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, no, the price is the same. It's just it's the retailers that determine it. But a lot of the retailers, when they come out with their price, they go to, like, the big reputable guys. They go, like, maybe Mile High, Midtown uh-huh. Comics, um... Oh, uh, what's that place? Uh, my comic shop. You know, they go to places like that, and okay, because they're the big guns and they're selling this book for that, we can base that off as our going price. But there's no law saying, you know, hey, this comic, this variant has to be this much. Right. They can take a hundred dollar variant and sell so, it for five bucks. So they're not getting charged more than nope. they would for a standard issue. They just have to order a specific amount of a standard issue. Yeah. Okay. So then, why like, do you now? Not that it matters to new readers really, but. You know what? Fuck new readers. This isn't about new readers. <laughs> this is about what's wrong with the fucking industry. Now I'm done with you fucking new readers that don't exist. And if you are a new reader, I apologize. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you're not a new reader. You're a fucking one of us. One but, uh, of us. One <laughs> of us. 
Do you think it harms the industry that they put out all these variants and oh, they absolutely. make people spend so much money? Absolutely. Like, it's, it's, uh, I feel like it's shooting yourself in the foot doing stuff. Like, it's, it's the 90s, man. Exactly. It's the That's 90s exactly all over again. That's exactly what it is. Like, don't they learn, doesn't history show you, like, you know? Apparently not. See, and this is where it hurts. Say you want the new Spider-Man variant. You gotta order 100 copies, okay? You order 100 copies, so you're like, damn, I normally only order 40. Mm -hmm. So now I have 60 extra copies that I don't need. Right, no, I understand. So you wanna sell that variant. Right, you wanna price that variant to get your money back. Yeah, totally. Now here's the thing you don't sell that variant. So now you just shot yourself in the foot by over ordering to get a variant you had no idea was gonna sell. Right. If you market too low, you end up losing money Mm -hmm. unless you can push those 60. extra covers you have as well you know what I'm saying so um, does it hurt yeah absolutely I, I'm i sick and tired of variant covers so do you as feel like maybe them. that they should maybe back off if they want to do variant covers like I said back off doing all the crazy special stuff the 3D covers the whatever it's acceptable and maybe just do, do a different artwork like they used to do a second print sometimes they would yeah. do a different artwork I mean cover. you know the variants are acceptable if you do them if, if you ration them out. Right. Don't give me a variant for issue 26, issue 27, issue 28. Issue, I don't need a variant every yeah, issue. Yeah, no. Maybe like special special situations. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, hell, they would double their money right there because they're bringing in, like you said, those people are just going to come in because it's like an anniversary issue. Plus, they could charge a little more because it's a special cover. Or, or remember you know? the 90s, you had the hologram covers and everything like that for... Miles issue 25, issue 50, issue 75, issue 100. Like every quarter, you got something good, you know? Mm-hmm. Once in a while, you'd get them in between, but it was like you said, you got, it was more of uh, more pages, you know, and you got more, it was a bigger story. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, um, what the hell was it? X Men 50, uh, X Men 50 had a foil cover, a tin foil cover, when they fought Post, the Herald of Onslaught. You know, and, oh, issue 50, okay, it was a fold out. Like cardboard stock foil, uh, tin foil looking cover art, like right, shiny right, artwork, right. you know. But then at issue fifty four was the introduction of onslaught. So they gave you a basic version, but then they gave you the foil version to it as well. Like, okay, I got it. Four four issues more, and yeah, but there was a reason for it. Right, you know what I'm saying. You might remember in the mid to late nineties when Marvel was doing the uh, here's your guide to the Marvel universe. So the cover was always a fold out because when you read it, it was like you know that they had the recap page. It was that, but in the cover, and it was like a fold out. Yeah, I think I remember, you remember that. that. Those are pretty cool. Okay, recap, recap pages. You know, that's recap pages are so necessary. That's the perfect nowadays. fucking way, dude. For yeah, especially with like us guys like us that read so much shit that you don't remember the last time. Yeah, it's like because, uh, like I said, if it doesn't, really, it's not something that's really sticking with you. Yeah, like I know what happened in the last Ninja Turtles after issue yeah so when i pick up this new one i know what you know mm-hmm. i i remember the story whereas like thor i probably don't remember and not I like, that i don't like thor a lot it's just going into that you know if marvel and dc sit there and say something along the lines of hey you know it's we, you know, we don't have the space for it look at what idw does their the inside front cover yeah is the cover checklist it's the story so far all the credits so they don't waste the recap page it's in the cover yeah you know, I, I understand you can use that space for like selling advertisement or something, but you've got many, many other pages. You know, why not? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Jonathan Hickman wastes a lot of fucking pages when he, with his Marvel comics. You'll get like 28 pages, six of them will just be blank with the title on it. Yeah, I, I hate that. Like in Infinity, all those white pages. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Um,. Nostalgia, man. Do you think nostalgia is good or bad for the industry? I bring this up because I've got uh, some artist friends on Facebook and other places, and we've discussed, you know, things that need to change in the industry, and uh, a lot of people feel like that they need to stop mining old properties based on nostalgia and making comics. I was trying to create something new. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I kind of agree with that. It's nice to see that. There's a lot of there's a lot of that happening now with independent books. Mm-hmm. If you step away from Marvel and DC, you know, Image is doing some great independent stuff. There's other companies. I've heard Valiant's got good stuff going on. There's uh, a lot of good independent books. Well, oh my God, Holmes and Watson. Dude, I love that book. I can't remember the name of the company that's putting that book out. I love it. I haven't really gotten into the Dynamite stuff outside of some Green Hornet 
Yeah. Which again, that's like nostalgia, though. So really, <laughs> for me anyway. But is that? I mean, do you do you feel like the nostalgia stuff is needed? Yeah. Like, never, you need it because you can never forget the roots. You can't forget where it came from. That's with anything. So you, that nostalgia factor is definitely a must. And if I mean, if it wasn't, we wouldn't have the three D covers from DC. Who are doing that again this fall? Yeah, I know. Like. Come on, really? Which we'll definitely be talking about that one. Can I get cardstock hologram covers like the Fatal Attractions books? Remember those? On the no. corner of the cover, it had like the trading card that was a hologram. You don't remember? Oh, those? yeah, yeah, the Marvel books. Yeah, 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 Fatal totally. Attractions. I do remember that. Why don't we get something like that? Remember the Spider Man? Yeah, those were cool. uh, the, the Spider Man, yeah. The thir- was it 35th anniversary? I think so. With the, the, the color covers with the hologram yeah. in the middle? Yeah, the, oh, and they were big ass holograms too, the Spider Man yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's were really cool, man. They were really cool. Something like, like that now, six ninety nine. Yeah, totally. And I feel like price is killing the industry too, man. Of the, course. You know, um, and then I like I read a lot digital. Um, you know, see, here is one thing that I favored. Now, as you say, digital DC over Marvel with doing some of their books are available. They have a physical digital copy you can get. You know, you buy the regular book for three. You, know, yeah. you use Justice League, for example. Right. Three ninety nine for the book. You can buy the digital edition comic for four ninety nine. The cover is painted differently, so now you have a variant cover. Right. And it comes with the digital code. Right, but then are so you, you get the option? Aren't you automatically killing the fucking value? Yes and no. Of the book, I mean, aren't you better off? Well, my just point like, is that know, they're giving you an option for it. Oh, I hear you. Where you can get the same story for a dollar <laughs> less, whereas Marvel. Two ninety nine books have no digital code. If it's a three ninety nine book, you've got the digital code automatically. Right. So you're not giving me that option. Why don't you take the digital code out and put those Avengers books back down to two ninety nine? Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Like that's what where DC they give you the option, Marvel doesn't. They're like, no, this is our. You're getting the digital code. Right. We're pushing this down your throat. You know. So I, I feel like there's a lot of, of collectors out there that feel like oh, the digital is just horrible. It's awful. How could you read digital? And, like, for me, it's like, man, it, it saves you money. I mean, there's books I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy anyway. Yeah. You're going to put them away. I know a lot of guys that torrent everything, and then they go to the store and they buy everything, and all they're touching it is when they take it out of the, the shop bag and put it into the bag board and stick it in the box, and they never touch it again. Right. And they just reread their digital copies. Mm-hmm. Or I know people that will buy the copies, and then when DC does the sales, because, I mean, you wait three months with DC. I don't know about Marvel, but on DC site, Three to four months after books come out, maybe even less, 99 cents wow. for digital. So shit, man. Like you said, they have the option. Yeah. Well, that's almost right there. If you just want to buy the regular the day it comes out, three months down the road, you decide you want the digital, there you go. I mean, I like digital, man. They, it's not the same. No, not at all. But I, I ain't taking a dump with my newest issue of Superior Spider-Man. The you know problem, the, the, the advantage <laughs> it's less space. And yeah. you don't have to worry about the book getting crinkled or conditioned or anything like that. Like I get it, and it's faster. You know, you can you don't have to leave your house to get it. You know, I, I understand that, but they'll never you'll never replace the paper, the hard copy. You Since we're we're talking about money and digital, do you think torrenting fucking hurts comic sales? Yeah, it's like regular bootlegging. Because then yeah. you get those one guys that are like, "Well, I'm not buying this three ninety nine comic anymore because I can read it for free from now on if I torrent it." So yeah, because then the sales go down. Sales go down. Prices go up on other books to try to keep it even. So yeah, it's it, like I said, it's like the movies, right? Even though the movies, I don't know if that'd be a fair comparison because let's face it, the movies like usually in the millions. Yeah, totally. You know, like okay, so I didn't pay fifteen dollars for your three dollar DVD to produce. You're losing money, you know. Like I right. get it, but, but that's what it comes down to. It does hurt, just like anything else. So now, speaking of different formats, t- digital versus the paper, would you rather get your comic books cheaper and have them on a lower grade paper? Yes, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Because that's all we grew up with, man. Yeah. I don't need the glossy stock paper. I really don't. I mean, it's, don't. it's nice, but that old stuff, there it was is. just... It's just take care of your shit. It can be done. It's been proven. I mean, how much was... When did they stop using that? And I'm not even sure what the price would have been on books at the time. Late, mid to late nineties, the X Men started doing it. First. Yeah, they went right to because glossy they had, pages. Yeah, they had the deluxe. They remember it said deluxe in the corner. Those were dollar ninety five. The non deluxe were dollar fifty, and it, the, were, the pages were non glossy. Okay, so to go back to newsstand editions, 
Well, you, my opinion, like yeah, that's, that's right the place. other. Well, that's the other thing. The uh, the dollar fifties were the newsstands, yeah. or the deluxes were comic shop only. So, what would be a feasible price for that, and would it be worth it nowadays? I mean, yeah, if you take care it of it. Would it help I mean, anything? That's like anything. If you take care would it of help it, anything, though? I mean, you would help. It, you would hope that it helps in lowering the price. Like, is there a way to get that kid that's got three dollars two comic books at least? You would think because he wants to read Avengers, he can't. It's three ninety nine. You want he wants to read Iron Man, he can't. It's three ninety nine. He wants to read Batman, he can't. It's three ninety nine. You know, so a lot of the big players, Superior Spider Man, three ninety nine. Yeah, no, that, I I agree. It's 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 rough because you have to pick and choose. When I don't feel like you should have to pick and choose, you should be able to eight bucks for two comics. You know, just where eight bucks back then could have got you maybe six. You know, so yeah. But I, I I've often thought if they brought back that old style newspaper comic. And made it cheaper. They it did it. Well, yes and no. They did it with uh, Damien, son of Batman. They brought back the old paper. And is it is it fair it to make three ninety nine a book? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of lame. Is it fair to compare the American comic book to the Japanese manga? In what way? And as as businesses, I mean, they both generally do the same thing, but manga is like you know a billion dollar industry over there, and comic books. Or our billion dollar industry isn't. It's not a billion dollar industry, but I mean, just in comparison, yeah, you know, that's how I would look at it. Um, it's all about the culture, man. You think that's, that's what that's it like, is? That's like comparing anime to just like regular shit on cartoons that we watch now. You know, we can't it's totally two different things. So, do you think that then, with like no, because I, honestly, in my opinion, I'm not really sure there's a way to get new readers in. Like, how? Why would you um, call? Japanese, like in order for them to be called Japanese comics, you gotta say, "Oh, they're anime." To know what you're referring to, like, how do they, how how do we know that they don't call them over there comic books? You know, right? To us, they're anime. To them, are they, is it still anime over there? You mean manga? Yeah, manga. Is it still manga to them? Yeah. Where we don't look at, it. maybe they have a name for the American comic books, so we just call it comics. You know, they it might, could be. You know, manga. Manga sleeve in Spanish. Did you know that? No. Yep. That's weird. Now you learn something. Apparently, we all learned something. Manga is sleeve in Spanish. Word. Well, I always Stop wondered. Knowledge, son. I always wondered maybe if like they Thank took you, the mind. attempt to do Super Spike, right? Like a bigger <laughs> book, like a, the digest size, like the manga. I, I always wonder if they just decide to try and take the manga approach to their books and say making the books ten bucks of just like all, you know, how, how many pages are those manga books? Um, two hundred usually, ten bucks. Mm. Spider Man book. Why? Why don't they try something like that? Do you think that's a viable business model for the American style comic book? No. Remember, and I'm not. You know what? This is going to come out racist, and I don't care because I don't mean it in a racist way, though. <laughs> Japanese people work their asses off. Think about that. Mm -hmm. They can. You see how quick they produce. Most mangas are in black and white anyway, so that saves time on coloring. But. They work their asses off from like 10 to 10. They're working. And they'll get like nine stories. They won't take a bathroom break until they're done. You know, whereas Americans, we got with the contracts, you know, all oh, it's just due by this date. So you can kind of pace yourself where it's just like Japanese might say, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. You know, but I think that's no, the mar like the American stuff wouldn't work that in that format because they wouldn't be coming out monthly either. Mangas come out monthly. Right. And for Marvel, well, not all of them. Some of them come out most quarterly. Of them. Most of them. So no, I don't think they'll work in that format. So do you think that? Do you think that comic books will be around in fifty years? Yeah. Do you think the art form will survive? It will. I mean, it appears to me that the conventions are getting bigger and bigger, which says to me that there are more people buying it, even if it might not be showing up on the ground level. I think it's more happening in like the back, the back issue level. Like, people are going back and buying old comic books, like, from when they were kids. I think there's a lot of guys that have good jobs now that are coming back into it as oh, older yeah. men. Yeah. They took their kids to see the Avengers, and now they're buying books. This is how you know money is obviously the big factor. Yourself, for example. Mm -hmm. Let's say you got 20 bucks for the week. What are you doing with that 20 bucks? Oh, yeah, totally not buying comics. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, that 20 turned into 2,000. Oh, yeah, then I'm... Buying the shit out of comics. There you go. Even comic books I might not possibly ever read. Exactly. You see my point? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Because I know it's, it's all about what you can spend. If I if I could afford, 
right now to buy comics the way I was buying them a little over a year ago where I was dropping like $175 a week on fucking stacks of books that to this day I still haven't read. Obviously that Like a Bloomquist? I made Bloomquist look like a rookie. Sorry, Dave. No, I've, I've I've seen him in Dreamland a couple times and he has big stacks, dude. That's two weeks worth. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fucking comics, dude. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to him and he was saying that uh, it was around the time that the Human Torch died. Mm. And they had the black poly bag, whatever, Human Torch death issue. And he was saying that he hadn't even gotten there yet because he was two or three years behind on his Fantastic Four at that point. He's still like, behind on reading. Yep. Now, as people that buy like that and read crazy amounts of comic books, I mean, they actually read everything they buy. Don't you th- don't you think they we deserve a little more man just overall quality really out of the books we're getting nowadays? I feel like the storylines aren't good. I feel like the artwork is sometimes subpar. I think they they uh, they're too quick to change the art team, and I'm sure that's because they get behind on stuff. But I mean, now here's a good example of a change, and in, in my opinion, not getting my money's worth. Growing up in the nine, I think they it ended in the nineties, kind of do it maybe early two thousands. You had so much exposition, exposition, I can't even say it, in the books. You had maybe five panels per page, little, little square boxes. Uh-huh. Each one had a small picture, and tell, they were telling you how, oh, you know, oh, Peter sits there with the look in his eye, you know, as he stares at his aunt with disgust or disdain or something like that. You know, like they were showing, they were telling you how that character felt so you could, be, like, really get in their head. Like, damn. Whereas now they did away with all that exposition. And they let the art tell the story, whereas you can just look at the art and be like, okay, he's sad, okay, he's happy, he's sad. Right, right. And, and you're done with the page. So, I, I get, you know, inflation, times change, money, mm-hmm. the, the value of money changes. But for three ninety nine now, I'm getting maybe nine, ten pages sometimes of wording, and the rest is all pictures, you know? Where, and back in the 90s, 80s, especially in the 70s, tons of exposition. Right. You know, and for half the price. So you felt it took you 20, 30 minutes to read a book. Right. Now you're done in five minutes. Yeah, seriously. You know, one book I will say to this day that always makes me take my time reading it because there's a lot of exposition in there. And at the same time, there's the artwork. You just have to stare at it. The Transformers books. The the IDW Transformers. The Robots in Disguise mm-hmm. and um, the WCI. Those you definitely get your three ninety nine out of. Every issue. That's like Walking Dead. I don't feel like I get my money out of that book. Walking Dead, you're done within two minutes. Yeah, right. I feel like it's like, damn. Cursing, pointing, yelling, self-doubt, end. Fuck, 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 (laughs) fuck. Yeah, it's... I don't... I would hope the industry's still around. It'll be. I'd like to see my son buying comic books. You know what I think is going to happen? This digital stuff is going to hit a peak, and then you will really start to see a lot of comic book stores close their doors. I think it's going to happen because it goes through everything, you know, like the stock market crash. Right, everything right. crashes. Yeah, look at I CD think, stores. Yeah. Music stores. Best Very Buy strong. has like n- really no... Yeah, nothing. I was like, why? I still like going to get my physical copy. Yeah, their their DVD sections are even really limited nowadays. Yeah, very. Um, but, you know, this is... I, I'm calling it, man. I'm predicting it here. The comics industry is going to have a huge crash again. Uh, the big chains... Mile High, Midtown, guys like that. The ones that are very, they've been around. They have the reputation. Graham Crackers, they'll be around. Mm -hmm. They'll take a hurting, but they'll be around. Um, A lot of those small chains, like the mom and pop stores, those are the ones you're going to see them close their doors. Because digital is going to hurt. And it's going to be like that for a little while. It's going to, a couple years. Then as everything picks, you know, the industry will get better. People come back like they did, you know, in the 90s. A lot of people fell off, but they came back in the 2000s. So something like that will come along. And all of a sudden, you're going to have people trying to hunt down more issues. You're going to have more readers come in because they're tired of the digital crap or something. Right. You know, and it's going to be that nostalgia feeling. It's, where it's like, like how vinyls made a comeback. Yeah. So people are going to start coming in here, and the, 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 the demand is going to be so big that some of these other places are going to be forced to open more stores again. Mm-hmm. And it'll come back. I hate to say that because I don't want to see any comic stores go out of business. Yeah, no. you know? but, I would love to see that this, this you know... It be, Rise and popularity with all these movies, and but I want more quality, goddamn it! The I movies are the quality. commercials, man. They I'm are. Telling you, the movies are the commercials. They are. Now we just need to get that quality up for us readers that are already here. Yeah. So that's uh. That's but you know, here's my thing. Oh. I'm a fan of the characters, so no matter who's writing it, I'm still gonna read it. Yeah, but like I said, Batman's been so terrible. I said this to you before we started recording. Batman's been so terrible for me that I don't even want to read it. But 
Well, that's how I felt about Green Arrow. When and how many people feel that way? And DC is still getting their money. Yeah. Because they're just buying it and putting it away because they're collectors. Hey, DC, maybe I got you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Them thieving bastards. Why am I singing like every other? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to become your thing. You're going to be singing, Junior. We'll get you on the street corner. We'll get Sanchez out there with a, a, a bucket for a drum. <laughs> It'd be good stuff. It'd be good stuff. <laughs> That's been issue 35. Our complaints and problems with modern day comics. That's our opinions, you know. It's, yeah, it's just um, our opinions. Anybody listening, you guys got a difference of opinion, you agree with us, let us know. Hit us up on our Facebook page. You know, Email us. All our information is where, Brian? At comicsremix.com. That's all you guys need to know. Good night. Peace. Peace.